Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out a new network attached storage device from Seagate. This is their new personal cloud and Seagate sent this to the show for us to take a look at. Uh, this is their two drive model, but they also have a single drive model available as well. I do recommend when you're buying a network attached storage device to get the two drive model, no matter which brand you get it from, because they have internal redundancy. So if you lose one drive, uh, your data is still safe on the other one. They basically mirror each other. So uh, be sure to look for that if you uh, can swing the additional costs. So this is it here. It's pretty attractive. Uh, what's nice about it is that they've put the drives in a horizontal layout. So a lot of these network attached devices we've looked at are often in little mini towers. This one is kind of more of a, it uh, looks like something you would put on your TV stand or something. So it's a little bit more attractive for a home theater environment. The hard drives inside are pretty noisy though. So you may not want to put it uh, in a room where you'd want some quiet. It does make some whirring sounds when everything is on and operating. Uh, it's pretty uh, simple though, as far as its overall connectivity. Uh, you have your gigabit ethernet port here on the back uh, as well as a USB 2.0 port. Now these cannot be connected directly to a computer uh, because it's a network attached storage device it connects to your network and it has to connect via the gigabit ethernet port here. It does not have wireless built in so you can uh, access it wirelessly once you get it hooked up to your network with the hard wire but uh, you cannot just connect it to your wireless networks. You'll need to put this uh, close to where your router might be or something like that. I have a video that I'll link to below uh, which explains all of these connectivity options that you have with these devices to make sure that you can get the best performance out of it because uh, it's important to really understand what you're getting into with network attached storage before you buy. So uh, check out that video and I've got some more coming up on this uh, similar topics very soon. Uh, so you have a USB port here. This is again not for connecting to a computer but you can plug in uh, external drives so you can back up things to and from those drives and you also have a USB 3 port uh, here as well. And because this is a two drive unit you may at some point need to replace one of the drives or both of them and you have a little button here you can push and that will uh, open up the uh, case here. So let me go do that real quick for you. And uh, not always the easiest thing to get into, but once you get it open, you have uh, access to both drives, even cut out the numbers here so you know which one you're replacing. Uh, you just pull this tape off and then lift the drives out and you can uh, make a replacement if you need to. So of course it does have uh, Seagate NAS drives installed. These would be the equivalent to uh, the WD Red drives. These are drives that are designed for uh, connecting to a network attached storage device. So what we're going to do next is put this back together, plug it in, and we'll do some performance benchmarks and step through some of their included software, including their mobile apps. Now, once the drive is plugged into your local network, you will see this personal cloud thing show up either on your Mac under the shared section uh, or on Windows in your file explorer under network devices. And what's cool is when you click on it, and you go into the public folder on there, uh, you'll get a shortcut that brings you right to the web-based control panel. And what's neat about this is that it updates that shortcut every time the drive gets a new IP address. So basically every time it turns itself on, it'll update that shortcut so you can easily get into the control panel and configure things. Now one of the things you're gonna notice about this device is that it is very simple to use. There is not a lot of options uh, to configure things. So if you're a tech savvy user that wants to really get in there and change all these little specific details about every little file on the device, this is not not going to be for you uh, but if you're somebody who's very new to sharing files over a local network or just wanting a simple way to get maybe your mom or dad into your device to share some photos or something uh, this is certainly a very easy way to get started with network attached storage and everything kind of centers around uh, creating a user which is why they put this front and center so on other NAS devices uh, you typically make a folder and then you assign users into that folder uh, in this one you create a user and that user gets a folder created for them and that's it so you can't make uh, other file shares on here beyond what uh, gets created for the user. So right now I have the Lon Seidman account uh, logged into my uh, Seagate device here. You can see I've got a little folder set up here and I made another folder inside of that. Uh, and this is accessible only to my user. So uh, the junk account here uh, cannot see this Lon Seidman folder, nor can I see the junk folder. And I can't make anything to share things between these two users. So if you have you know, if you want to do something where maybe you share something with you and another person, uh, you have to do that through the public folder. It's the only way to do it on this device. And that was a design decision they made uh, because of really gearing this towards home users that don't want a lot of complexity. So they do make a, a NAS product above this one that does have that functionality. But again, this is really a simplified kind of product. So uh, keep that in mind as we're going on. To add a user, it's pretty simple. Uh, I would suggest actually the remote user is probably the quickest way. You just type in an email address. Uh, it sends that email out to uh, the person you want to get access to the, to the device and once they're configured they can get in remotely uh, or if they come over you can also get them in uh, there as well and when you create that user it makes a folder for them 
and they're in and that is pretty much it. All right, a few other things to point out. This is the services section here and you'll see it's got a DLNA server on board. Many network attached storage devices also have this feature. Uh, it'll let you play back audio, video, or photos on a smart television provided those files are compatible with that TV. Uh, every TV does it differently. So you'll have files that you'll be able to see on here but you may not be able to play back. So just keep that in mind as you're uh, stepping through some of this stuff because some of the older TVs support the DLNA standard but re don't really play back anything. So uh, you may or may not have success with this but uh, give it a shot and see what happens another thing to point out here is the iTunes server Now this is going to be off by default when you first get it so you just click this little edit thing over here to start it up uh, this only works with the Windows and Mac versions of iTunes so you can't use an iPhone or an iPad uh, or an Apple TV and use the iTunes sharing uh, with those devices and this this works with an older version of the iTunes sharing so if you if you got an Apple TV and you want to play back stuff from uh, this device device you're gonna to have to do it through the Seagate app that I will show you in a little bit uh, you cannot connect directly to this with uh, one of those devices without using their uh, app first uh, Seagate media is a, a little app that we're gonna show you in a few minutes and this is the uh, thing that gives you the ability to access that app uh, with it you can of course turn that off if you so choose it's got a couple of file services here it supports mo both the Mac and Windows file systems although at the moment the Apple one is a little buggy I'm gonna show you that when we get to our benchmarks in a minute or two uh, you also have an FTP and an SFTP server. These are off by default, but if you want those uh, servers on, you can just flick those on and get access to the drive that way. It also supports WebDAV, and uh, if you have a Mac, you can use this as a time machine backup, and I think it'll, it'll assign that backup to each user individually, which is pretty cool as well. So you have uh, the ability to uh, do that uh, very nicely. And then there are some other services too, like uh, the Seagate Access. You can decide whether or not you want people to uh, get access to the drive remotely. And you can also use those USB ports I showed you as print servers, and you can configure that uh, here as well. Now the device offers a lot of backup options, so you can go into the uh, backup option here off the home screen. The first one you'll see is backing up your computer to the personal cloud. If you have a Mac, it's going to work with Time Machine. That's what they want you to use. On Windows, there is a Seagate backup utility, and they'll give you the link uh, in here if you're connecting to the drive via a Windows computer. Uh, you can also back up your personal cloud, and that's an important thing to do because even though you've got redundancy in here, you probably want something you can get off-site as well in case something happens to the building or home that your drive is stored in so uh, it's always good to have an off-site backup and you can send uh, those backups in a couple of different uh, ways so one way you could do it is to connect a local drive to the one of the usb ports uh, you can also send it out to a cloud service so it supports all of these services here amazon s3 and baidu box dropbox google drive and a few others i haven't heard of uh, and it'll kind of do that uh, on a schedule you can also back up uh, something to another computer or device on your network as well so you can connect maybe another one of these or to a different computer or something like that i'm just going to do a quick local backup configuration though and show you how this all works now the only problem i see with this is that every user has to log in uh, themselves and set up the backup for their particular folder again it's got these folder structures that nobody can see anyone else's folders so everyone's got to go in uh, and set those things up themselves so we're going to back up our uh, junk folder here so I'm going to set that from the source screen here and then I'm going to send it over to uh, the external USB drive I have plugged into it uh, you have some cool options here so you can do a manual backup where just whenever you feel like it you can go in and log in click the button and back it up uh, you can also do a scheduled backup where you say you know what every day at 11 p.m. Uh, back up to the external drive or you can even do custom stuff and do it a little bit more frequently or less frequently uh, there's also an automatic option which I think is pretty cool so when you walk up with the uh, external drive to the two bay here and just plug it in uh, the drive will back up to uh, the external drive automatically and then when it's done you can even have it eject which is kind of nice so if you have something where you're taking a drive back and forth to work or something the minute you plug it in it'll start backing up and then when you come back down in the morning before you leave it'll be ready to go you can just take it out uh, bring it to the office and bring the next one back the next day so pretty cool backup options there for uh, backing up the device it also offers the ability to sync things uh, up to Google Drive and I think a few other services as well so Dropbox and Google Drive so you can have a folder in Dropbox that you use to put different things in and it'll keep things in sync the only issue I found with this is that it looks like it can only do uh, every hour at the uh, the quickest frequencies you can't really have it do a constant uh, synchronization which if you're doing a lot of things with Dropbox 
uh, might be a little bit of an issue. You can force it here just to kind of make it do it when you go and click on it, but I couldn't get it to uh, do it any quicker than every hour, which was, I think, a bit of a problem for me because I would like to be able to go in and have it update in real time, especially with Dropbox when you're always changing files and you want things uh, to go back and forth. All right, back to the home screen here. The App Manager is their little app store, and there's a few things in here, not too many just yet, uh, but they do have BitTorrent Sync, so if you're not comfortable syncing your data up with a cloud service, uh, BitTorrent Sync will allow you to sync data between devices that you own directly, so you can get your files synchronized without having to use a cloud service as an intermediary. Uh, Elephant Drive is just an online backup solution. S Drive is pretty cool. We're going to get to this in a second, along with Seagate Media, which is how you access uh, the items on the uh, device here with a mobile device. Uh, WordPress is what it is, a WordPress server you can run on here. I would not suggest running your website on this, but if you had like a little family thing that you just wanted to have open to a few people, uh, you could certainly handle that load pretty easily. And then OwnCloud is a way you can access files uh, on your personal cloud using a web browser. So it's a little open source uh, project that gives you some basic uh, kind of cloud-like functionality through a web browser. So that is how that works. But I definitely want to show you S Drive because I think this is probably the most interesting feature about this. And what S Drive lets you do is access the device remotely like it's on your local network. So what we're going to do here is connect uh, my Mac here to my iPhone and get basically connect into the drive uh, via the Verizon cellular network so you can see how this works in action. And once you install the S Drive application, which is available on uh, Seagate's website, you'll see that you get a little option here saying personal cloud and open in Finder. Now I am connecting to uh, the internet right now through my iPhone's tethering and I am able to get at my drive uh, like it's a local drive on my Mac. So as you can see here, I'm just within the basic Mac Finder and I am able to uh, connect to my folder and access files that uh, reside on the drive without having to use an app to interface with things. So you've seen on some of these other devices, you can use them like this when you're in your home network, but once you leave, you really can't you know, save and open files that are on your uh, NAS device without having to use a second app or something like that. Now you do have to install this little app on here first to get access to the drive, uh, but once it's in there, you've got uh, essentially an ability to uh, connect to that drive like it's locally attached to your computer, and that is really handy to have that. So you can just pop in here, uh, open it up in the Finder, and it'll show up uh, as a device on your uh, local network. You can even get at your uh, Seagate NAS that way. It does that by creating kind of a little proxy, so it's almost like a little VPN that it's setting up. Uh, they do say it is encrypted end-to-end. -end. I don't know who holds the security certificates, though, but it seems like it's relatively secure, at least enough for uh, personal use, and you don't have to worry about uh, you know, someone snooping at a coffee shop or something to see what you're uh, browsing on there. But as you can see, I'm able to log into my account here uh, and get access to a lot of the stuff. And again, doing that through the cellular network, I can even pull up uh, some items that are stored on that drive as well uh, without having to uh, you know, go through a secondary app or something like that. The only issue though is that uh, the personal cloud app does stay resident uh, on the computer. You can quit it, but there's no way to stop it from loading every time you boot your computer up. So that's a, the only issue for me is that I'd like the choice as to whether or not uh, to load that app only when I need it versus having it pop up every time uh, and take up room up here in my taskbar and everything. But it is an easy way to get at your files remotely. I've got my phone out here, so let's take a look at the Seagate Media app, and this is how you can access files on the drive from your mobile device. It works on iOS, Android, and I think Windows Phone too. Uh, what it tries to do is index all of your media files into uh, these little directories here. So if you don't want to uh, poke around on the drive looking through different folders for different files, it'll kind of consolidate uh, all of that media into one place. So you can see here we've got videos, photos, uh, music, and some other stuff here, documents as well. I have no documents loaded on there, but if I did, you would see them there. Uh, they have the ability to create some playlists, so you can kind of hold things down here. Uh, select the files you want to put into the playlist and then click new playlist to get that going. Any music file that is on the Seagate drive, you have to play through the Seagate app. So if uh, you're trying to download something or whatever, you can do that, but uh, you'll have to play it through the Seagate app after it's downloaded. The files kind of live within that application, at least on iOS. On the Android platform, you could probably download them and use a different music player, but iOS is a little bit uh, more restrictive in that regard. Um, you can also just browse the directories yourself if you just want to poke around and see what files you have where. Uh, you can just go to the on personal cloud here at the bottom and browse around there. The one disappointment I had with it was the photo browsing. Uh, you'll see here this photo just looks really blurry. So let's pull this up. Uh, and you can see when I pinch and zoom here, it just looks really blurry and fuzzy. If I go over to my Mac, where the same exact file is loaded up on the screen right now, 
as I zoom in here, you can see everything is nice and sharp. And again, this is the exact same file that we're looking at uh, on the Mac that we are on the iOS device, and it's just really blurry. Uh, I saw the same thing on Android as well. So not perfect yet, um, but I think they could easily make an improvement here on the software side. Uh, one cool thing you can do with it, though, is use this as a way of backing up your photo rolls on both uh, Android and iOS, and I believe Windows Phone too, by turning on the auto upload. So anytime you get back to your house, you're on Wi-Fi, the app will start sending all the pictures and videos you took uh, into the Seagate Central for you automatically, which is a nice little feature to have there. So that's pretty, uh, pretty handy. Uh, one last thing is you also have access to streaming. So you can uh, send things from the app into Chromecast, into your Roku, and also to your Apple TV. So if you have a, a movie file that is living on the Seagate drive, you can play it through the app and then use that to cast it over to a Chromecast or to uh, an Apple, Apple TV or AirPlay device or one of those kinds of things as well. So pretty cool there. Let's take a look now at some benchmarks and see how the drive performs forms on the network. So in the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which is what we test all of our drives with, we're getting about 35 megabytes or so on the right side and about 45 megabytes or so on the read side. I'm seeing slightly better performance when I run it uh, on my Windows machine back there on the right side. What was interesting is when I connect to the drive using the Mac file protocol, the performance uh, takes a hit. So the write speed actually does okay, uh, but the read speed was only like 12 or 14 megabytes per second, which is really odd. When I switch the Mac here over to uh, the Windows protocol, call, it runs a lot faster. So I think what's happening is uh, there's probably some glitch in the software that is embedded on here. I'm going to let Seagate know about this. I would imagine by uh, the time you see this, maybe a month or two from now, they've probably corrected that issue. So uh, in the short term, if read performance is really important and you're running a Mac, uh, you'll want to connect via SMB to get the speeds that you're seeing here. Uh, otherwise, you're going to see uh, pretty slow speeds on the reads, although the writes were not really impacted by that. Very odd. So that is the Seagate Personal Cloud. This is the two drive unit, which I do recommend over a single drive unit just because you get better data redundancy. I'd say out of all the NAS drives that I've looked at to date, uh, this is probably the simplest one to get started with if you are really just starting out and have no experience trying to share drives over your network. So if you're looking for something that the whole family can just kind of dump their data into without a lot of complexity, uh, this is definitely something worth taking a look at because it is really simple to get it up and running. There's not a lot of options to get you confused. You just set it up and, and go. I would like to see you know a little bit more sanity on the backup side. I would like to just have a single way to just back up everyone's folder at the same time without having to have everybody uh, set up their own backup strategies. I'd like to see that app improved a little bit and hopefully they can also uh, fix some of those performance issues on uh, the Mac file protocol. All those things I think are very fixable and none of them I think are deal breakers at this point. So uh, not a bad product. They've made some really nice improvements to their NAS product line since I last looked at them about a year and a half ago. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.